Hi everyone, I'm going to walk you through the image trace tool in Adobe Illustrator and how I use it for a ton of different projects today. Hi everyone, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer and I also teach people how to design and produce wedding invitations. If you're interested, I do have a monthly membership for stationary designers that you can check out in the link on this video. Today I'm going to walk you through one of my favorite features. I have a couple other videos. Um, that show you this in action as well that I'll talk about throughout. So this is the image trace feature in Illustrator. You can get it by going to window and image trace, but I put it over here in my workspace. So it's always there. I have gotten this graphic icon from the noun project. Um, whenever you're doing this, make sure you're using icons that you have rights to and that you're not just stealing other people's artwork. <laughs> I do have rights to this one, but as you can see, it's not in vectorized format yet. If you're not really sure the difference between roster and vector, I have a video I'll link for you in the corner. Um, this one is currently roster, which we can tell because the only anchor points are on the outside of the square. We can't actually do anything to the palm tree itself. We can't actually do anything to the text. So what we need to do is get it vectorized. And to do that, you can, of course, use the pen tool and draw the entire shape, but it's a lot easier, especially with a black and white element like this, to use the image trace tool. So this is open over here. You can see when we're not clicked on anything, it's grayed out and when you click on this, it comes back up. So I like to generally use the presets for a black and white image like this. I typically go with black and white logo um, for calligraphy, sketches, that kind of thing. I usually go with sketch art and then you can also create your own presets and save them here depending on your exact settings. So when we click black and white logo, it kind of looks like nothing really happened. <laughs> um, some of these words may be joined up a little bit. So the threshold is always gonna be automatically in the middle here, uh, but you can move it up to include more of the design. So it kind of cuts off between like black and white and the threshold will include more of the design, you can see it's getting a little larger. Lowering the threshold will include less of the design. This is not as big of a deal with a really crisp icon like this, but you can see how it's affecting the text and what's included. So I like the middle. You can do a lot of this other stuff here. Um, I really like ignore white because you'll see in a second, if we ignore the white, then we don't have to go in and delete it. This is especially important with text because if you have white in the background, then like in the middle of the E, the A, the D, you'll have little white uh, vectorized elements. So I like to do ignore white and then it's still not fully vectorized. We need to click expand. And when you expand, you can see the bounding box is on the edge of the tree and the words, the actual graphics, and you can see the blue lines. You might not be able to see them, but they're there that show that they're active vector paths. And if you click on the direct selection tool, you can see all the different anchor points. So this is going to be joined together. So we'll need to ungroup it in order to like delete. But then this is fully vectorized. So I could go in and edit any of the anchor points. If I wanted to, I can now change the color of the palm tree. I can resize it to whatever I want and do anything that you can typically do in Illustrator with that palm tree. So let me show you a brief example of how I would do this with calligraphy. I have a whole long video on this and how you get it to this point because that's probably the hardest part. And once it's already cleaned up in Photoshop, you can bring it into Illustrator and I like to use the sketch start one, which automatically has ignore white. Um, and then you'll see that threshold will make a pretty, pretty decent difference here in how much of the calligraphy is being included in the final results. This is a lot thicker, especially on those hairlines and the cleanup that you do in Photoshop will affect this. So watch that other video if you're a calligrapher. If I bring this down, we get a lot thinner on the hairlines, but we will start missing some things. So there will be some gaps in here and it also might look a little bit shakier. So you just want to find that nice middle ground. And just as a tip, this will be a lot uh, more accurate, the smaller sections that you trace. So if you're trying to trace an entire page at once, it will be um, a lot less accurate because you'll need to find a setting that works for everything on that page. Whereas if you can kind of zoom in, you might get better results. 
Then if we were to expand these, we now can go in and use this tool. I like to use the smooth tool, which is E on my calligraphy to smooth out a lot of those lines. And then you can finish digitizing your calligraphy from there. So now what will happen if we try to trace like a watercolor element. This is something that a lot of people ask me is how to get a watercolor element vectorized. The key here, if you watch our roster versus vector video is that you don't necessarily have to, as long as the element was painted larger or as large as the size you're printing it and then scan in with a DPI of 300 or more, you don't necessarily need to have it vectorized and you're gonna lose some of that watercolor quality. But you can do it if you need to, or if you need to blow it up for like a large welcome sign or something, then you want to vectorize it. Um, I always do that when I'm blowing something up past like eight by 10 or so. I usually vectorize it. It's gonna lose a little of its watercolor thing, but generally those are viewed from farther back too, so it's okay. So you can use, this is gonna freak my computer out while I'm recording and doing this. I might freeze for a second, but you can do these lower high fidelity photo what it does when you create a vector out of a watercolor is it tries to take every different shade and create a fully closed path with that shade. So when you get into like this dark color coming into this lighter color and even all the different light shades of color that are in here, it's going to create a lot of little paths. So let me do it. it might take a minute. I might have to skip ahead, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. So it does a few of these like path smoothing, boundaries, et cetera. Um, we're not ignoring white on this one. So you can expand this and you can see how many different paths were created. I'll even zoom in to make it more obvious. How many different paths were created. So if I ungroup everything and get rid of the white, you can see that it no longer really looks watercolory. It more looks graphic. And that's because every single different shade has a closed path. So all of these different shades are different closed paths, which is just crazy. Um, you can use this to edit things. Like if you wanted the entire stem to be a single color of green or something, it's a little bit easier to do that after it's vectorized. Um, but I highly recommend working with watercolor in Photoshop. I have another video that you can watch about uh, changing the colors on watercolor in Photoshop using adjustment layers. Uh, and I don't recommend tracing high fidelity photos too much unless you absolutely have to for a reason. It can create, like if you wanna do a digital portrait of someone and trace a, trace a picture of them, it can create a cool effect, uh, but it's gonna lose some of that watercolor that you wanna do. So I'm not saying I never do it, but it's best to use image trace with low color uh, pieces or really graphic kind of silhouettes and uh, black and white elements. Let me know what questions you have about using the image trace tool. Check out our full Adobe play playlist for more videos on graphic design and Adobe features while you're here. Thanks everybody.